One of the fastest growing segments in the food industry today is the home delivery business. Now, this is being done in a variety of different ways, but for the purposes of this video, I want to focus on the home delivery of products, food products that come in a box to your doorstep. You order these, on, you order them online, you pick out what you want. And the concept is you have all the materials in this box and to make yourself delicious meals for an entire week, an entire month, or just a few days, whatever you so desire. You sign up on one of their plans and you pick your merchandise and it shows up at your door. And the concept being the following. You don't have to worry about going out and buying seasoning or any of the raw ingredients. Everything is given to you. So if just so happens that you're going to have beef stew for dinner tonight, in your box will be the beef that you need, the potatoes, the onions, the celery, the seasoning, and most importantly, instructions. So that all you gotta do is follow the instructions and you're on your way to having a delicious meal that's delivered to the convenience of your front door to bring into your kitchen. And the concept is, you don't have to go food shopping for it. It's all here, it's all put together for you. It is an exciting concept that is growing rapidly and there is an abundance of people already with a footprint in the category. And we are fortunate to be working with some of these companies that are delivering this home-based uh, home uh, business where the product's coming to your doorstep. So let's talk about the industry. We look at it as the food processing home delivery industry where these products are being ordered by you online and then delivered to you. Well. A lot goes into the process to get that box to your front door. You might not realize how complicated this gets. So what happens is these client companies have tremendous production facilities where they have production lines of people that are dedicated to certain functions in the entire process. So for instance, and I have spent time in these places, you might have one particular line of 15 people and all these people are doing is taking uh, potatoes out of big sacks and putting them into bags so that they can be included in a box that will be delivered to your doorstep. Or maybe somebody is taking um, raw flour and, and mixing that into a bag and adding it into a pouch. Or maybe somebody is taking some produce, breaking apart lettuce and giving you just the amount of portion you need to complete your meal package. So that's the type of process that goes on and it's not done by machine, it's done by people. And on any given day, these companies use thousands of people to get that product assembled and prepared and ready for you to cook at home and serve to your family and yourself. So how does this work? Well, basically what happens is we contract with these client companies and they tell us, how many people they're looking for on a particular day, and the numbers will shift uh, substantially. We might have 150 people working in a facility on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but then if they get caught up with their production or their orders shift down on Thursday, Friday, we could go from 150 down to 20, down to 10, down to none. Hence, that's the temporary staffing business and why these companies contract people like Action Staffing because we have the ability to turn the valve on and turn the valve off in terms of people power. That's what we do every day. So if you approach an assignment at one of these companies, the first thing I want to explain to you up front is it's not a guaranteed work day every single day. We're going to try and give you a 40 hour work week to the best of our ability. And if you work a few days in this particular spot and all of a sudden there's no work on the last two days of the week, we'll try and move you into another assignment so that you can bring a full paycheck home to your family. That's our goal. We want you here and we want you to be productive and we want you to earn a living. So we're going to do everything possible to balance those situations out. Now, quite frankly, it might be completely the reverse. They may be so busy that we simply will have you in that facility all week long and you won't be working anyplace else. And we certainly hope for that to be the outcome. So let's break this down. What can you expect when you interview and apply for a food processing position with one of our client companies? Well, number one, let's talk about GMPs. 
GMP is an acronym for Good Manufacturing Practices. Let me repeat that, Good Manufacturing Practices. Now, what does that entail? Well, it begins with your own personal hygiene. If you're handling food, you wouldn't want to go into your kitchen and serve a meal to your children um, with your hands being dirty because you just changed the oil in your car. You want to make sure that you're practicing good, clean hygiene, which means when you appear at our office ready to be sent over to one of these companies, you want to be clean and you want to make sure that you are dressed properly and you want to make sure that certain things are not on your person. What are we talking about? Let's get specific. You can't have nail polish. You can't have any type of body piercing in your face, on your fingers, okay? If you have uh, any type of makeup on, they will turn you away. So those are some of the things that are very important beyond being clean. You can't have any of this going on on your person. You don't have to worry ever about bringing food into these facilities because one of the benefits of working at these food processing plants is that they provide meals for you. They even provide snacks so that whether you are working first, second, or third shift, and the case would be breakfast, lunch, or dinner, a suitable meal is provided to you free of charge, which means you don't have to worry about bringing anything with you. And that makes it more convenient for you and the customer, so that's a good thing. Also want to remind you, part of the GMPs, uh, in addition to not having any nail polish, acrylic nails are not allowed. So again, these safety hazards pertaining to food safety contamination must be followed. And if you are seen not following the rules, you will be escorted off the property and told never to return again as one of our workers. We don't want that to happen to you, so please follow the GMPs. There's no getting around it, there's no shortcutting it. And if you don't think this is important, just think back to the recent articles you may have read or the news stories you may have heard about a famous fast food chain called Chipotle. Because of a food contamination situation in their processing plant, they had to close their stores for months. Just think about what that did to their business, what it did to their brand. So again, we have a commitment to our client to make sure that we are productive, that we are helping them, and we are never doing anything that could compromise the success of their business. That's our job. Also, dress code, very, very important. You can't be wearing hooded sweatshirts because the client is afraid that if you had your hood on, there'll be a lack of visibility, which could create a problem, a hazardous situation. You can't wear any scarves. Now, why would there be a temptation to even bring a scarf or a hooded sweatshirt to these facilities? I'll tell you the reason why. You're basically working inside the biggest refrigerator you will ever see in your life. Most of these facilities have these assembly lines in the middle of a cold environment that averages about 34 degrees. Now freezing is 32 degrees. So if you're not dressed properly and prepared for this, you're going to be very, very cold in a short period of time and chances are you won't complete the assignment. So. Being prepared with proper dress is very, very important. And the best way to do that, because as the body works, the body gets warmer, is to arrive with layered clothing that you can peel off and work with if you get too warm or too cold. Very, very helpful to help you adjust to the working environment. You also need to have non-slip footwear. Boots or non-slip sneakers are acceptable in this particular case. But keep in mind, you might be walking over a space in the facility that is wet, that has some grease, or maybe some dropped banana peels. All these things can happen because you are processing food. So you want to make sure that you have non, uh, uh, you want to have skid-proof footwear that will protect your person. Now in the facility, what happens is you'll be assigned a line to work on, and it could be a number of different tasks and you'll be doing that work most likely with a group of other individuals in an assembly line fashion. And what is the client looking for? They're looking for a good positive attitude. They're looking for someone that comes to work with the ability to continue to work through his or her shift until break time, until lunchtime, 
Uh, and know that you're not sitting down at a desk while you're doing this. You're standing up at an assembly line. Um, so while there's not heavy lifting, there will be constant moving of your hands. You might be lifting lightweight uh, items and packing them in small containers or boxes. So it's a physical type of situation uh, that lasts throughout the shifts, which typically are eight hours. Uh, so again, if, you're, if you think you're going to arrive at this job hung over from the night before or tired from the night before, this is not going to be a very good situation for you. A, you're not going to have the energy to deal with it, and two, you could be putting yourself into a dangerous situation because your level of alertness is going to be compromised. So again, be aware, cold environment, you have to be dressed properly, you have to follow the GMPs, and make sure that you're not wearing anything or anything is on your person that doesn't belong. Of course, you're not wearing any earbuds at any particular time. No cell phones are allowed in the facility. Those have to be checked uh, at our work, work site check-in spot outside of the facility before you get there. Uh, and then also, you want to make sure that you arrive to our office early enough before the shift so that you can get in our transportation vans and get to the work site on time. And once you're at the work site, it's very important. You're working with your team members, but again, we don't want to have a situation where you have to leave the facility because of a bad attitude or you spoke back to a supervisor in a way that you shouldn't have. So you want to avoid all these things. If you have a question about your check, a question about the work you're doing, we have on-site supervisors there during every single shift and they will be more than happy to assist you and help you. The goal being we want you to earn as much money as you can, we want you to get as much time as you can with our client company so that you can earn a good paycheck for the week. You don't make any money when you're not working. It's as simple as that.